Welcome back everyone. In this video we're doing some common limits of sequences that you will see if you are working with limits of sequences quite often. Um, we just want to make sure that you have a few shortcuts that you can just kind of pull out of your head so that you're not having to go back and do a ton of work to simplify some limits that you could maybe decide on the fly pretty quickly. Uh, one common one that you'll see here is the limit of the nth root of n. Obviously as n is getting really large, the idea here is that the value inside is getting big, but the type of a root that we're taking is also getting bigger, so the thing inside is getting larger, but this type of root should be making it smaller at the same time. Time. Before when we looked at this in our video on L'Hopital's rule, we noticed that we saw this as limit of n to the 1 over n, and this was a form of infinity to the 0 as n gets really large. That's an indeterminate form, and the way we deal with that is to make it into some sort of fraction so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. We do that with the logarithm method. So let's go ahead and set that up. I let y equal my limit. We want to think of this as y equals the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the 1 over n. Remember then we'll take the natural log of both sides, so we'll get ln of y is equal to the limit of the natural log of n to the 1 over n, and we can throw that natural log in the limit because it's nice and well behaved. Uh, on the positive values for n. We go ahead and then use properties of logs. If you recall, what we do is take the exponent and move it out front of the log. This is the same as the limit of 1 over n times ln of n. If we look at this limit here now and try to evaluate 1 over n is going to approach 0 and ln of n is going to approach an infinite value, it's still an indeterminate form. And we need to write it now as just a fraction so that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So we'll go ahead and do that up here. So we'll say ln of y is equal to the limit of ln of n over n. Now it's in fraction form instead of product form. And we get an infinite amount on the top as a limit and we get an infinite amount on the bottom as a limit. So again, still indeterminate form, but now it is one of the forms that we can use L'Hopital's rule on. So we'll say L'Hopital's rule is going to be used, and we'll say ln of y is equal to the limit of the derivative of ln n as a function would be 1 over n, and the derivative of n would just be 1 on the bottom. Obviously we can do some simplifying on that, so we'll say ln of y is equal to the limit of 1 over n, the limit of 1 over n we should know is 0 so that we get ln of y is equal to 0. y is the actual answer to the limit that we seek, so I need to get rid of the ln. If I take e to the power of both sides, then we will get y equals e to the 0. And y equals e to the 0 tells me then that y equals 1. So the common limit of the nth root of n as n gets larger and larger is 1. We have a similar thing when we're taking the nth root of a constant, that is also going to equal 1. So before we had the nth root of n, where both the inside and the index are changing as n. Here just the index is changing, but this is some number. So for example, like the limit of the nth root of 5. This is also going to be 1. Um, there are a couple of reasons for this. One of the easiest reasons, I think, maybe to see if you look at it as limit of the nth root of 5, let's say, well, we can really write that as the limit of 5 to the 1 over n. And as n gets really large, this would go to 0. And so we would end up with 5 to the 0. And that is not an indeterminate form. That is a determinate form. We know 5 to the 0, that's going to be 1. So you can see when we just have some constant there that is positive, then we'll get a limit of 1 for that one as well. So here we have something that looks a little bit different. We have the limit of 1 plus some constant over n to the n. In this case, c is just some constant. It doesn't have to be positive. In this case, it could be negative. Um, and the idea here is if you try to think about what happens with larger and larger values of n, we get c over n, some constant over something really large becoming close to 0. This exponent gets larger and larger, so we get the form 1 to the infinity, and that's an indeterminate form. The way we'll deal with exponential indeterminate forms, remember, is to let y equal the limit and take the ln on both sides like we did with the last one. So let's go ahead and evaluate that. I'll let y equal my limit. 
uh, the next thing that I do is take the ln of both sides. So ln of y is going to equal the limit of ln of 1 plus my constant, whatever it is, over n to the n. And remember that we use properties of logs to move the n out of the exponent. So we'll say the limit of n times the ln of 1 plus my constant divided by n. Okay, we will get an indeterminate form here. I get something infinite here. Uh, this approaches ln of 1, which is 0. So this form is infinity times 0. That's indeterminate form. And so we'll need to now write this as a fraction. We'll go ahead and bump this n down. We're going to go ahead and think of this as ln of y is equal to the limit of ln of 1 plus my constant over n over 1 over n. So we have taken this n, bumped it down, and divided by the reciprocal. That's the same as having times n out front. So we haven't changed anything yet. Uh, if you look here, you'll notice we get ln of 1 on the top as a limit, which would be 0. We get 0 on the bottom. So this form is 0 over 0. We have an indeterminate form that we can now use L'Hopital's rule on. So we will apply L'Hopital's rule. So we will get ln of y is equal to an equivalent limit, we take the derivatives. So the derivative of ln of 1 plus c over n is going to be 1 over that thing. So 1 over 1 plus c over n. And then times the derivative of the inside for the chain rule. So this is, uh, think of this as c times 1 over n. The derivative of 1 over n is negative 1 over n squared. So we get negative c over n squared. On the bottom of this limit, the derivative of 1 over n will be negative 1 over n squared. And when we reduce these, we will actually get, so negative over a negative, that would be a positive. Uh, the n squares will go away, so we'll just get c here. So this will become ln of y is equal to the limit of c over 1 plus c over n. And if we think about the limit here in the bottom, this c over n, as n gets really large, will become 0. So we'll get the limit of c over 1, some constant over 1. So that's just going to be c. So we get that the ln of y is equal to c, whatever that constant was to start with in our original problem. And then to get rid of the ln, because y is the answer to my actual problem I was trying to find, we take the exponential of both sides. That will allow the ln to drop off. We get that y is equal to e to the c. So our limit for this one is e to the c. So an example of this, if we were looking at what's the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus 5 over n to the n, then this shortcut tells us it's going to be e to whatever constant that was in there. So this would be e to the 5 for this example here. Okay, so these are three that you want to know. The limit of the nth root of n, or the nth root of a constant, is going to be 1, and the limit of 1 plus c over n to the n is going to be e, exponential base e, to whatever constant was inside. Okay, try to keep these at the front of your mind when you're looking at limits of sequences and maybe using some of this in series work as well. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next video.